What is Shaken Booktube? And my name is Cam and welcome back to another video. First of all, congratulations if you willingly clicked onto this video because I get it's it's kind of weird. <laughs> of all the things to be ranking within the bookish world, why dads? Well, why indeed, my good friends? As you may have noticed, I am currently in possession of a luscious mustache. Style choice? No, although I'm flattered you think I could pull that off. I'm growing a mustache for Movember, and the reason I do Movember is to raise money for suicide prevention in memory of my father. And bada bing, bada boom, we come full circle. Here we are. Dads. Book dads, even. So book dads, it was actually not that easy to find a good list of, like, fa even father figures within books. But I've got seven here, and they range from really good to really bad, and maybe somewhere in between, but that's the joy of tier lists. I'm gonna tell you what I think, what categories I think these dads fit into, going from S being the best, and D being the worst. And then in the comments below, you can tell me whether you agree or disagree or whatever. Or better yet, how about this? In the comments below, I want you to leave me your very best dad joke. To get us started, I'll tell you my favorite dad joke. It's, pr it's pretty good. <laughs> if you put your child down to go to sleep and they don't, if they stay up all night screaming and basically just refusing to go to sleep, are they technically resisting arrest? <laughs> so bookish dad tier list. I want to start with the very first dad that came to my mind when I thought of bookish dads, and that is Mr. Weasley, Mr. Arthur Weasley. I could have said Sirius as well as a father figure, but I only wanted to put one Harry Potter dad in here. And really, you, you can't go past Arthur Weasley when you're talking about bookish dads. It's difficult to think of one single negative trait about the guy. Him and his family live within a, you know, magical wizarding world where wealth is pretty common considering the ability to do magic, and yet he and his family still find themselves in poverty as far as wizarding goes, and yet despite it being a disappointing experience at times for all of their children, and there's a lot of children, but did we ever talk about the fact that Mr. Weasley and Mrs. Weasley must have been <coughs> banging on the reg? Mr. Weasley must have been born to be a dad, or he just straight up has never heard of birth control in his life. Anyway. At times, all of their children are disenfranchised being in the company of middle class or extremely wealthy wizards. But Mr. Weasley and Mrs. Weasley have always had nothing but an optimistic out view on it. They have the, yeah, it sounds corny, but they have the view of, well, at least we have each other. I think that's pretty cool. I guess one negative I could give uh, Mr. Weasley, although this is a part of his charm, is that he's... He's a little bit irresponsible. Like, let's be real, his son and his son's friend took his magical car for a joyride over the skies of a muggle city, potentially exposing the entire wizarding world, and he thought it was kind of cool. I mean, we all did, but he he's a dad, so we pro he probably shouldn't have. Anyway, I'm gonna give Mr. Weasley an A. A for awesome. And like, how cool is it that he also became a father figure to Harry, although Harry had you know, maybe a few father figures, to be honest. But he welcomed this child that had a target on his back into his family with loving arms, without any hesitation whatsoever. I think Mr. Weasley is part of the reason that Harry Potter, and like especially for me growing up, it was kind of a lesson I had to take with myself a lot of the times as well, is that family doesn't just have to be blood. It can be about people who are compassionate to you and people that you choose to be compassionate to. Anyway, following up directly from that, where do you think we should put Jack Torrance from The Shining? Ooh, ooh. <laughs> I mean, you gotta give Jack credit, right? He's persistent, desperate to be in the company of his family to the point where he will literally try to chop his way through a door with an axe just to be in the company of his family. I mean, even before the hotel kind of took over him, he was still a little bit of an asshole. I'm just not sure if I should rank him as a dad either before or after the events of The Shining. Personally, I think after because, like, that's... Kind of his whole story is The Shining. Again, yeah, like, ooh, he tried to murder his family with an axe. Like, get over it, first of all, okay? Did he not get what he deserved? He ended up frozen up to his neck in a in a maze. The poor guy got tricked. There was a bunch of ghosts, you know, uh, pranking him. He, they were pranking him. Maybe they wouldn't have even let him go through with it entirely. Maybe he would have been standing over his wife with the axe, about to swing it down on her, and the ghost would come out and be like, oh, shit, bro, damn, it was... It was a prank, man. Chill. Jack Torrance gets a C. I'm gonna keep a little bit of faith there for Jack. I have... I have faith. So recently I rewatched Twilight. Yeah, I know, Twilight. <laughs> you know what's funny about those movies? 
Like, don't get me wrong, the acting is horrible. <laughs> There's so many points where the dialogue is just so jilted and, like, the acting wasn't very good. The story itself is obviously quite dumb. You know, it romanticizes the idea of um, super unhealthy and extreme codependency. Sure. But they're kind of fun to rewatch every now and then, right? Does anyone else feel that? Like, it's weird. Like, I know they're bad movies, objectively, but they're still kind of fun. There's a lot of brilliant cinematography in there. But anyway, I watched Twilight, so we're talking about Charlie Swan. Let me say something about Charlie Swan. Charlie is... He's a mood. All right. Bring him in. We have all been a Charlie Swan at a lot of points in our lives. I think we can all agree on that. He just seems perpetually exhausted with life. Not just exhausted, but also confused. Charlie's like the only one in all of the Twilight movies who kind of... He doesn't really know everything that's going on, obviously, but he sees things like the strange, almost albino boy dating his daughter and acting all weird, and he's kind of like, what the fuck is going on here? He's the only one that seems to really question the weird shit that happens in those movies. But that's not what makes him a great dad. I say Charlie Swan is a great dad because he pulls off something that a lot of dads, even in real life, a lot of good dads struggle with, but it is something very important. If I ever become a dad, I know it's something I would struggle with as well, and that is, although you may not approve of your child's actions, and although you may try to steer them on the right path, he was never not supportive of Bella. We know he didn't like Edward, and we know he tried to get uh, Bella to hang around more with Jacob because they were a family that he trusted a lot more. But he never tried to give her any ultimatums and say like, you can't see that boy anymore or, or I'll disown you or anything like that. He was always hesitant and cautious, but I feel he was also pretty supportive almost all the time. My personal view on it is that Bella Swan was a fucking terrible daughter and terrible to her father, but Charlie was always good to her. I think Charlie Swan is super underrated, so I'm going to put him up next to Arthur Weasley. I think I think they're both awesome dads. Mr. Wormwood from Matilda. I would be quite torn on this because I, I freaking love Danny DeVito, and I love Danny DeVito in this movie as Mr. Wormwood, but because he's so brilliant in it, I fucking hate the character. And we're meant to. We're meant to have an extreme dislike for this character because although Mr. Wormwood is in a children's movie, Matilda is a children's movie, and I think it's entirely appropriate for children to watch. As an adult, if you go back and watch it, through an adult's lens, you see that Mr. Wormwood and Mrs. Wormwood are fucking horrible parents. I would honestly say worse than the Dursleys in Harry Potter. They're extremely neglectful. They put uh, Matilda through an extreme amount of, like, emotional abuse. They let their other kid, like, bully the hell out of her. The real parents that exist, like Mr. Wormwood, are the parents that cause the type of damage to kids that they carry with them their whole lives. Like, the whole, I'm big, you're small, I'm smart, you're dumb. I'm right, you're wrong. And there's nothing you can do about it. Constantly drilling into a kid's head that they're dumb and they don't know what they're talking about. That's the type of shit that does real damage in the long run. So yeah, I'm going to give Mr. Wormwood a D for... Dickhead. D for dipshit. D for... For doodle brain. D for demonetized. <laughs> what do we think about Humbert from Lolita? Next up, Danny Swift from The Art of Racing in the Rain. The Art of Racing in the Rain is a fictional story uh, told through the eyes of a dog, but a really smart dog. It's, it's basically like a human, really, a human perspective. Told through the eyes of a dog, it starts off a lot like other dog-themed books where, you know, he gets adopted by someone, and the dog, you know, goes through their life with this person as they change and get a family and all that. It's kind of the same, although it doesn't just hinge on the dog dying as being the sad thing of the story. There's a whole lot of other intricacies, and... The Art of Racing in the Rain is actually, like, one of my favorite books of all time. It's absolutely fantastic. And there was a movie that came out recently. But anyway, Danny Swift, he's a race car driver. And I'm not going to give any spoilers, but Danny and his dog Enzo, they, you know, they're best friends. And eventually Enzo and Danny, they meet who is going to be De uh, Danny's future wife. And Danny and his wife have a child. And then from that point onward, some of the most depressingly just horrible stuff that could possibly happen to a family happens. Despite going through some of just the roughest trials I could ever imagine a father going through, he manages to kind of keep the faith almost the whole way through until a certain point where it feels like it, he's going to crumble to the depression and the misery, and obviously that's the point where Enzo helps him through. I don't want to give any spoilers, but basically what I'm saying is Danny Swift goes through just some of the worst stuff 
uh, father could go through and manages to come out the other side without completely losing himself. That's kind of where the title comes from, The Art of Racing in the Rain. I think Danny deserves an S. Last but not least, we have Mr. Tywin Lannister. Like, he's a horrible person, right? Awesome character. Great in the show as well. He's a villain. Sure. But is he a bad father? Yes. <laughs> I mean, he, he builds a legacy for his family, sure. He also... <laughs> He also demonizes his own son for being born differently and blames his own son for the death of his wife, even though he's a smart enough guy to know that that's not rational. And I mean, there's also the tiny little thing of him letting two of his kids bang each other. The B tier is looking quite empty there. Okay, all right, I'll put him in C, okay? Then there's the compromise. C for... I guess a good way to think about it is, would you want that person as a father? And I would rather have a tractor run over my balls than have Tywin Lannister as a dad. Well, there you go. There's pretty much all the... There's all the bookish dads I could find. Let me know what you think of my rankings in the comments below. I mean, I know I'm objectively correct 100% without any room for error whatsoever, but maybe you have a different opinion, a different dumb opinion. Do me a favor, go tell your dad you love him, or your father figure, even if your mum happens to be your father figure, if your mum's a, you know, single mum that's raised you on her own. Tell her you love her. Just, just do it. You never know. And if you are a dad, don't let your kids bang each other. <laughs> Catch ya. She's got class and style, sweet knowledge by the pound, yeah. Baby, never act wild, very low key on the profile. Catching feelings is it all Let me show you how it goes Love's the word, spins the bird